now. Damn it. You. That's what I'm getting ready to say. You. Oh no, what is that? <laughs> oh, there's the receipt. How much did everything cost us anyway? Okay. Main Street goes oh, slow, slow down. Khaki Hardware Store. Get ready, guys. Here comes the most exciting part. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. I don't know what that is. Oh, barbershop. Town Hall. Oh, police station. Yay. Supermarket. Gas station. Combo. Our local pizza place and another packy. This is New England, of course. Ryan, why are you a city driver when we live in the country? Because I do what I want. Doing everything you shouldn't be doing. That's right. While driving. That's right. That's my husband. I probably should have drove. <laughs> Ryan, are you going to buy the most expensive book at the used bookstore? Always. <laughs> hey guys, so here we are pulling into the Niantic, Connecticut book barn. This is chapter three. So this is the third building, the most newest of them all-ish, I should say. <laughs> anyway so uh, there's Ryan my husband so um, yeah so we're going into chapter three is our favorite store out of all of the stores it is it houses the mystery thriller um, books it does house romance and cozies as you can see I don't know who Suzanne Wiggs is um, maybe you guys do but I, I don't read romance so um, this is for the romance lover Yep, that lady. Um, this is the place to go. This is, would be the store to go. So if you if you do live in the area and you are really into, um, if you're into books in, ge in general, I mean, most people know about the book barn. Um, but even if you know you come up to New England to visit, this is definitely a great place to go. But yeah, again, here, all cozy romance um, books. And they just have a, a, a crap ton of, of books. It's insane. I mean, literally, as you can see, they line floor to, to ceiling. Um, they always have a lot of overstock. And um, the people who work here are also um, bibliophiles. They, <laughs> they love books as well. And I swear they, you know, they love... They just, they do. They love to work here for the fun of it. It has an upstairs. We did not go upstairs. I forgot to, but I think I lost my husband up there because that is the technical reading section. Um, paperback mysteries. Yeah, I'm not sure why they have technical books and nonfiction type books, the the, the nerd books up there um, in the same building with romance cozies and and thriller mysteries but <laughs> that's just how they do it you guys um so i had a great time this is my favorite section and this is me just meandering through the store ghost hero i did not end up buying that book it sounded cool ghost zero ghost ghost hero yeah uh, i ended up at some point reading the synopsis there i don't know and i just i didn't like what i saw but um yeah but you have just you know if you're into thrillers 
the way I am. That's typically my my genre of choice. Um, then this is the this is the store to go to. I don't know why they don't have horror and thriller in the same store. That always kind of has bothered me because it just they kind of go hand in hand, and, it, and I don't really understand why they don't house them in the same store. But if you want horror, you have to go it just you know I mean a quarter of a mile down the road to the Main Street store, and um, yeah, don't talk strangers, you guys. Don't don't do it. But you have to go to the the other store, the Main Street store, to, to get your horror fix. So it's kind of a pain. I think I get why they do it. They just they want people in the uh, the horror store. <laughs> no pun intended there. After I just got done reading a Grady Hendrix book, but um, yeah, lots of you've, you've got your your Nelson DeMille's, you've got your Clancy, uh, Clive Cussler. All those guys are in here. Um, there's a book. Oh, where did it go? Lots of hardcovers. Oh yeah, I did end up buying that book, as you will see later. Um, Gone Girl. Lots and lots of Gone Girl up there. Um, all the paperbacks. Oh, yep. And there he is, Mr. James Patterson. So if you are a James Patterson fan um, and love his world, this is the place to go because there is a giant shelf just full of James Patterson books. I do not read him. Um, I haven't tried. I, I just, he's just never come into my life. Paula Hawkins, Into the Water. Oh my God, you guys know how much I hated that book, right? And a lot of other people did apparently because they have overstock of that book. So um, yeah, didn't like it. But lining the shelves are just a plethora of paperback mystery, thriller, you name it. Again, I'm just completely rambling and um, see, you see, I walk the way I talk. Yep, that's a mystery bag. Um, I just ramble in my journeys through life and meander and wander aimlessly and I, I verbalize words in the same fashion. So a beautiful place to die. I didn't. And women with a bookmark. Why didn't I pick those up? Oh, I hated that one right there, The Last House Guest. That was just a terrible book. I didn't I, I did not like that. Then you've got your your Lee Childs, your more uh Tom Clancy paperbacks, I think. Um again, you know, these are all um oh, I did get those too. I know, right? Hey, Ruth Ware, yeah, I, I'm not a huge Ruth Ware fan. I did like the turn of the key. But the others, mm, that one I purchased seemed very interesting. And there's Ryan with his guitar Bible. He builds guitars, you guys. And you will find out about that coming up here shortly. <laughs> I warned you. Historical mysteries. Yeah, so there's a whole section here with historical mysteries and the roaring 20s, 30s, and 40s, World War II, World War I era um, books. So if that's your bag, then that would be the place to go. And then lining these shelves coming up here are more cozy mysteries. So it's just continued, as it says, cozy mysteries continued lining those shelves, those go quick, as you can see. There are a lot of cozy mystery readers in New England, and I am one of them, and I am not ashamed. I, I have two cozy mystery series that I, that I follow, and uh, I love them. Yes, paranormal romance. There's, again, this is very popular, as you can see, because the shelves are very bare. So paranormal romance is, is popular up here in in our area as well. And again, you know, I just got really bored with um, filming all of these sh these aisles and aisles of books. So I'm just kind of giving you the, the, the wrap up here towards the end. And I, I found Ryan. Um, so it was a successful um, journey through chapter three. And uh, <laughs> again, and oh, there's our friendly bookseller. She's just amazing. She called the other store to find out if they had a book for me, but they didn't end up having it.
Is it martini time? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> One of our favorite places in New London. The social. Although we're not very social. Are we? <laughs> and we picked a perfect time to come because it was empty in there. Perfect for us. Had the whole place to ourselves. How was your day yesterday? Oh, it was draining. Hey, <laughs> you have buttholes. <laughs> I don't, get it. I don't get it. Remember, it's not the size of the butthole, it's what comes out of it. Oh, yeah, and I got a lot Remember? of that yesterday. <laughs> okay, so we had a fairly successful It was a good day. Mini haul. Yeah, it was nice. It was it was nice. We're slightly tipsy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I ended up finding some really good books. Um, I'm I Picked Skin Deep by Liz Nugent, who I love. I read Unraveling Al. Uh, un I read Unraveling. <laughs> I read Unraveling Oliver and Lying in Wait, and I love those two books. She's a ph phenomenal. She's a phenomenal Irish writer, and so I was excited to um, get this. I feel like it's the it's in the large print edition, but because it's chunky, and her books aren't usually chunky, but. Anyway, so this one, Liz Nugent. Liz Nugent. I want to say Ted Nugent. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. No! Not, I love Ted don't, Nugent, but don't, I don't love Ted Nugent. You guys know what I mean, don't, right? Don't let her fool you. Her favorite thing is music. It's true. Music. Yes. And then the second book I got was The Tenant by Catherine Engberg. I've never heard of this book before, so if you guys have read this book, let me know um, without spoilers what you thought of this book. But it is a Danish detective series. It's number one in the Danish this Danish detective. Sorry, I was like fucking your face. Um, in a uh, uh, detective series set, detective series set in Denmark, which makes me very happy because um, I am a scandal file i'm a scandinavian yes and that's where my family's from so on my dad's side so you know first book um that i've read or that i'm going to read that takes place in denmark so very happy about this one another one is graham norton that surprise is a shocker right there i know because Isn't it? yes total shocker he's so funny on he's, tv I love, him. love, we love watching love the Graham Norton show because, well, yeah, we love to watch Graham Norton because yeah. he's, you know, like the... He's the quirky he's the, all guy. Like He's the quirky all guy, but he's not the Johnny Carson. No. Of, he's the British... He's... What he's, is he? No, he's Irish, actually. He's the Irish... Um, he's like the fifth Beatle. Jimmy Fallon. He's yeah. the fifth Beatle. He's the fifth Beatle. He's the fifth Beatle. He's funny too. <laughs> like you can't get enough of him. Yes, I love Graham Norton. I had no idea that he actually wrote books. So this is going to be um, phenomenal because it's called Holding, and I, apparently it is a Irish um, mystery. I guess, and so I just kind of picked this picked this out of a bunch of various books that were hanging out there, <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, "Oh my God, Graham Norton! Are you kidding me? We love Graham Norton, so why not, right?" And then, "Death in the Family" by Tessa Wiegert. I don't know if I know I've seen this kind of you know um, rolling around out there on BookTube, but I I haven't heard too much about it. I think I've seen only a few reviews and... Only in families. Uh huh? Family dramas. It's a family drama, right? It's a horror, but it was like a family drama. Well, it's called Death in the Family. Yes. Yeah, so it, there must be some family drama going on Always. Here, always. I guess. I got my own. We call it <laughs> Kardashian King. <laughs> you. Me. Okay, so I love building guitars. It's a hobby of mine. So I've done some inlay work. I've done some actual body work. So I've done, uh, I got some Paul Reed Smith rebuilds that I did. 
that I love his work. It's phenomenal, especially the inlays. Um, I love Fender because Fender is just that, it's that universal axe, you Gibson. know. And then Gibson, I got an SG model that I just absolutely loved. It's just uh, just a lot of bits and pieces. I got an LTD. Uh, haven't had an Ibanez yet. I kind of lost that they're one. They're not that. They're not that. No, Ibanez is not. They're so hyped up. Yeah, but they're good to play. I mean, you can beat up an Ibanez. You know, that's oh. that every day. Or kick Rickenbacker. Around. Yeah. I'm a big Rickenbacker fan, you guys. So anyway. <laughs> anyway, so my book here that I picked up was it, the most expensive book at the used bookstore, <laughs> like normal. Yes, it was. Per usual. Yes, it was. But I really want to learn more advanced features on the guitar. And I think by learning that, I can learn how to build better. Yeah. And, but like I said, I, I wish I could show you guys some of my inlay work. It's absolutely amazing. It is amazing. Maybe. And I will have to show you some of his work. He builds guitars and they are beautiful. So hand, some of them hand done, hand painted. Hand inlaid, it's I've done he's an artist. I've done sapphire, eight carat sapphire inlays to the guitar bodies. Mm -hmm. I've done, you know, gemstones to you name yeah. it. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's good stuff. So that was our book haul, you guys. We had a great day. It was like our first yeah, it was a nice date. outing. It, it was, was good. It was really nice. It was yeah. the first date night, date day <laughs> in a long time. Because, especially with COVID. Especially with COVID because Ryan works from home. Yeah. So his, this is his office we're filming in right now. I'm, and, a, I'm an engineer. Yeah. So I do optical engineering. Yes. And, you know, he's able to work from home. Thank God. You know, we are very grateful for that. And um, so... We don't go out. We don't. We don't leave the house. We don't venture anywhere. And, and so we're, some, we're homebodies. We're homebodies. But we love being home. We do. We really do. We love. We love home. Yeah. We love our home. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice place to be. So thank you guys for asking me to come onto the show here. <laughs> Usually I just leave Dina to her books and <laughs> give her space and have her own time. <laughs> but it was so nice to be requested, so thank you. So there you go, you guys. There's more of my husband's <laughs> in all of his beauty, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we drank too many martinis. Yeah. He had a, he had a few Bloody Marys. Uh, spicy, though. But spicy! They were good. They were good. They were so spicy. Anyway, so. so. Back to the red beer. Yeah. Anyway, so you guys have a great night, and thank you so much for um, joining us on this little book haul, mini book haul, our first mini book, ha yeah. book haul that we've done, and we'll probably keep doing this, Yeah, I guess. Call it Ryan's Corner. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to work that in somewhere into the channel is... I get a little corner, put a little dunce it, cap on. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I'll make him a dunce cap, and we'll call we will call it Ryan's Corner. So yeah, that might work. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right, you guys have a great day, thank and thank you so much for watching. Oh. Last name is no. King, so we call it Kardashian King. No, damn it. No. <laughs> oh, what? I'm gonna edit that out. So anyway. <laughs>